how's it going? This is Zeno. Welcome to this video. Today I'm going to talk about the top 10 skills for preppers. The top 10 skills that you need to be a successful prepper. Uh, this is basically a companion video to uh, the one I made a few months ago uh, entitled the, I believe it was the, uh, how to start prepping the top 10 list. Uh, that was more of a stuff video. Today I'm going to talk more about skills. Uh, before we get started, we kind of have to unpack this top 10 list a little bit. We have to talk about a few things before we just jump right into uh, our list of skills. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define what really we're talking about here. Um, prepping skills, you know, what is a prepper? What are skills? Let's go ahead and define those two things real quick. Uh, first of all, with, as far as the term prepper, I really do make a distinction between somebody who is a prepper and somebody who is a survivalist. Um, typically, preppers and survivalists have very different uh, priorities uh, as far as skills and, and what they're preparing for. Survivalists tend to be much more lone wolf, bushcraft oriented, much more um, uh, sort of, you know, basic survival skills, uh, much more on that level. Preppers, especially what I call practical prepper, which is really what this video is intended for, practical preppers tend to be uh, obviously a little bit more practically oriented, uh, tend to be preparing for the more real life scenarios that might happen. Uh, it's definitely a plan for the worst, hope for the best type of scenario. That isn't to say that we don't, as practical preppers, have uh, a very uh, a, a very large amount of preparedness for a lot of different scenarios, but uh, you know we're really typically not concentrated on the um, shit hits the fan, world's gonna end, or at least civilization as we know it ending type of, of scenarios, your doomsday prepper. Um, most of those people, to be honest with you, most of those people on that show are actually survivalists, um, but uh, or crazy, one of the two. But uh, your practical preppers definitely are starting with more things like, uh, you know, prepping for that uh, winter storm, those natural disasters, earthquakes, depending on where you live, uh, losing your job. That's a very popular thing for a lot of practical preppers to be preparing for. Um, economic collapses, inflation, uh, slow slides, whatever the... Uh, the case may be preppers tend to be much more practical. Preppers tend to be much more focused on those things. Uh, the next thing is define the word skill. I'm not going to define it, but it's definitely important to say it here that there are basically two types of skills, and it's important to know the difference between the two. There are what we call general skills and specific skills. So a specific skill obviously is skill to do a specific task. task excuse me. So for instance, uh, changing the oil in your car. Okay, that's a specific skill. Uh, you, you're going out and doing a specific task. Well, there are general skills behind the scenes of that that you require in order to do that. You have to be, oh, you know, mechanically inclined. You have to know, you know, the, the tools that you're using and how to use them and the difference between metric tools and, and whatever. And, and, you know, there's a lot of kind of general skills in the background that you're going to need in order to perform that specific skill. Sometimes we talk a lot about the specific skills and we tend to forget the general skills, which are very important, that lurk very heavily in the background, if you will. We're going to be talking about both today. Both general skills and specific skills are going to be on our list. Uh, the next thing uh, I wanted to talk about real quick before we get into the top 10 list is we're going to take a break from guns today. Put a few of them out here for all of you to enjoy. Uh, I am a gun channel, so I understand most of the people that come to my channel and watch the videos are uh, definitely gun enthusiasts. Uh, certainly most of the people that subscribe are gun enthusiasts at some level. Uh, so put a little bit of eye candy out here, but to tell you the truth, we're going to back away from the gun topic for a little bit today. Talk really about, you know, more about prepping. Um, guns definitely have a role in prepping, um, but sometimes that role, especially in the gun community, is, is in my opinion, a little exaggerated. Um, so we talk about guns 97% uh, of the time <laughs> on, this, uh, on this channel, so we're going to take today and, and just back away from it for a little bit. Talk about some other things. Uh, next, it really is important to understand that there are an endless amount of skills, and just because there's a skill that didn't make the top 10 list doesn't mean it's not important. Um, it, I will say it's probably not as important as the top 10 skill, uh, top 10 skills, but that's not to say that it is 
not on the list and therefore doesn't need to be mastered. Uh, that's definitely not what I'm saying. Just because something didn't make the list doesn't mean it's not important for you to learn how to do it. There's tons of skills on there and depending on what kind of prepper you are, if you're a practical prepper, if you're a mainstream prepper, if you're a, a lone wolf prepper, a survivalist, a homesteader, uh, if you're living in an apartment building versus living on your own home versus living in a secluded off the grid farm, uh, you know, what is going to be important to you and the types of things you're going to value are going to be different. And so, you know, you have to be able to assess what your situation is. And that's actually going to be one of our skills here in a minute. But um, there are an endless amount of skills. And depending on your situation, really depends on exactly which skills you need. Um, the top 10 skills that I've picked out here are what I consider to be the general and most important general and specific skills that every prepper should need. Okay. So one last thing before we get into the, uh, the top 10 list, then we're going to dive into it. Again, told you I had to unpack a few things here, um, is I'm not really getting hung up on the, on the order of stuff here. I kind of have things grouped together as far as what types of skills they are. I definitely think that the number one skill is in fact the number one skill. Um, I think it's the most important one, but I'm not getting into the minutia of, you know, three is much more important than seven or anything. They're all 10 of them are extremely important. In my opinion, you could jumble them up in the, in the list would be, uh, you know, a very, very, very good list of skills, uh, regardless of the order of them. I uh, ran into this a little bit with the, uh, the how to start prepping the top 10 list, the stuff video that I made a while ago, and uh, definitely ran into that with some people commenting, you know, why is three of, you know, more, why is that above that? I again, people kind of getting lost in the minutia of everything and, and then completely missing the point as a result of it. It's important, as I tell people on that video, I'll say it here on this one, it's important to understand that all 10 of these things are really important and you should definitely do your best to master all of them. So, and then very quickly move on to others. So. Without further ado, let's get started. Number one, most important, I'm not David Letterman, I'm starting at number one. Number one, most important skill as a prepper, hands down, this is a general skill, is organization. Organization is, in my opinion, the number one skill when it comes to prepping. It permeates so many different levels of prepping and is one of these uh, skills that will separate the men from the boys. Separate being a good prepper and being a not so good prepper. Being a successful prepper and maybe being an incomplete prepper. So organization is definitely important. In this, I kind of also lump planning and goal setting. I think that goes very much hand in hand with organization, but it really permeates a lot of different levels. You have, you know, first of all, you got to sit down and create some lists, analyze where you're at, what you need, what you have, where you want to go, what are you prepping for, um, what are the things you fear. You know, you have to sit down and do all of that first. Then you have to say, okay, you have your basic. Uh, you know, organization within your home. You know, you have to, you know, shelving units and things like that. Where are you going to put stuff? Uh, what's the what's the the organization method that you're going to have for the stuff in your house? You know, when you're actually talking about stuff, um, you know, is stuff going to be where you need it to be when you need it? Are you going to know where it is? When something happens and you need something, do you can you walk right straight to it and pick it off the shelf and use it? Um, that's very important. Being able to properly rotate all of your foodstuffs, things like that. You know, you have everything on shelves. You can't just sit it there and forget about it and never look at it again. It could be expired or spoiled or, or, uh, or infested with, uh, uh, vermin or rodents or whatever by the time or, or damage somehow by the time you need to use it. You have to be continuously rotating through things. You have to be continuously monitoring. You need to have a schedule to be able to do that. You need to be rotating through things that are expiring. Um, and, and using them or donating them, uh, though that's a constant plan that you always need to be working through. You need to be going through and looking at uh, all the uh, the equipment and things that you have. Your, your chainsaw, your your uh, your generator, your, uh, your your solar panel. Is everything working properly? It's it's no good when you have a big storm that rolls through your neighborhood and a big tree goes down the backyard and your chainsaw doesn't work because you've neglected it for two years and you didn't take care of it. Um, so you know you have to be on a good solid rotation of checking all your gear, making sure everything works properly, making sure you have everything you need and making sure you know where it is when you need it. So that all goes into organization. Extremely, extremely important. Number two, moving right along, we are cruising, uh, is frugality. Being frugal with your money. This is one of the basic tenets of prepping. Uh, it, it really is. I, I, it's one of those things that if, if, if you're not a frugal person, you're really not going to be a good prepper uh, because 
prepping is all about obtaining um, a, a lot of stuff. I mean, let's face it, we all like to say, you know, you, you, prepping is all about, you, you know, focusing on skill sets and things like that. That's true. But prepping is all about, too, also having the stuff that you need when you need it. Being able to buy it now while it's readily available and inexpensive so that you can use it later when it is either not as readily available or it's much more expensive so that you can have what you need when you need it um, and when prices go up or or uh, or inflation goes up or, or the economy starts to slide that you've got all this stuff so you can live comfortably or you lose your job or something like that that you have a lot of stuff that you need that you can maintain your normal lifestyle for uh, as long as possible until you can uh, hopefully survive whatever it is that's happening so um, it, it, frugality is kind of the backbone behind this because uh, and I've seen people do this is it's a lot of stuff to buy there's a lot of things to consider and you can spend your money very unwisely and you can spend it very quickly when it comes to prepping. You don't want to start prepping for the, the eventual collapse of the American economy and within a very short period of time uh, wind up precipitating your own little micro collapse of your own little family economy. You don't want to spend yourself into the poorhouse trying to, trying to uh, uh, prepare for an economic collapse down the road. That's, you know, you're better off not prepping at that point in time. Uh, so you definitely want to spend your money wisely. Number three, again, a big one, one that separates the men from the boys here, risk assessment. Risk assessment is one of the fundamental general skills of prepping, in my opinion. Being able to sit down and assess what risks you have and to be able to start prepping accordingly, especially when you first start prepping, because you got to start somewhere. Okay, you're not going to start with a meteor hitting your house. Okay, you're going to start much more simply than that. So what, where do you need to start? What are the most important kind of in your face fears and risks that you have? Is it an earthquake? Is it a winter storm? Is it losing your job? Um, and, and that's where you want to start prepping. The lack of risk assessment is the whole reason why the show Doomsday Prepper exists. That is a perfect example of people with lack of risk assessment. Now, you can make the argument, a lot of people do, that if you prepare for these far out, you know, fairly uh, low probability of happening scenarios like, you know, suns causing the EMPs and, and nuclear attacks, you know, if you prep for that, then you're going to be prepared for the little things that might happen. And that's true. But you're not going to shoot right for that target right off the bat. Uh, you'll spend yourself right into the poorhouse you trying to do that. Um, it's important to, to assess your risks and prep accordingly. Uh, prepare for the worst, hope for the best, be practical with your prepping, assess what risks you have and prep accordingly. So very, very important. Uh, number four, now we're going to get into some specific skills. This is the number one specific skill. And the first specific skill that we're going to talk about is first aid. So. Big time. I think everyone needs first aid training. Everybody, regardless if you prep or not prep, doesn't matter. Everybody needs to have good, solid first aid training. First of all, everyone needs to be certified in CPR, in my opinion. Secondly, everyone needs to have recently taken a good first aid course. These things are all over the place. Fire departments, uh, police departments, community centers, YMCAs, uh, libraries from time to time hold CPR classes and things like that, uh, community colleges, uh, your local Red Crosses, and uh, all those types of things will have good quality CPR certification classes and also first aid classes. Take them. Sometimes they're free, sometimes they cost money, doesn't matter, take them. Go as far as you want to go here. You know, become a paramedic, become a nuclear brain surgeon for all I care. It doesn't matter. Go as far as you're comfortable in going. But you definitely want to start with getting certified in CPR and taking a good first aid class. Keep your certification in CPR up and current. Revisit that first aid class every few years to keep your, uh, or, or continue to progress down uh, good solid first aid training. Um, you can even, you know, I know in my local community college we have here in town, uh, you can take uh, first responder classes, you can take uh, trauma classes, you can take, you can become as, as, as big into this as you really want to go. 
Um, you can take classes specifically for caring for chronically ill people, uh, hospice care, things like you know, caring for people that are very sick. Um, you can take those types of classes. Um, you can really prepare for anything. Those are all really, really good things to do. Uh, those types of places, community college, really good place to look for a lot of different specific skill training. So first aid, definitely important. Number five, we're halfway through. Cooking. And I kind of lump into this nutrition too. So know that that's kind of hanging in the background there. But cooking, a very, very important skill. You have to know how to cook for yourself. Okay, you can't be depending on other people to cook for you. You can't be depending on takeout and all that kind of jazz. Uh, you know, if you're depending on takeout and whatnot, likely you're probably you know, not living a very nutritious, healthy lifestyle. But uh, definitely you want to be um, knowing how to prepare and cook your own food. What's the internal temperature of a chicken in order to be safe to eat? What's the internal temperature of pork in order to be safe to eat? Uh, you know, how to bake bread, things like that. You need to know these things, okay? You just have to start cooking for yourself if you don't already. You can't depend on your wife to cook everything for you or your mom to cook everything for you or whatever. You need to have cooking skills of your own. Very easy to figure these out. You know, just start cooking with your wife, cooking with your mother, watch cooking shows on TV. There's plenty of books and stuff out there at the library and bookstores. Um, community colleges, things like that, have tons of classes for cooking, basic stuff. And if you don't know how to cook, learn how to cook. Okay? And if you don't know how to feed yourself properly and nutritiously, then you better do that too. So I'm not here to push a certain diet. My wife and I happen to be paleos. But, uh, you know, whatever. Whatever works for you is what works for you. So go out there and do it. Number six, there we go, uh, where am I? Number six, gardening. Again, very important. Gardening is one of those things that when you think of prepping, gardening is usually one of the things that you think of. Um, everybody needs to have a garden. Whether you live in an apartment in the city or you live out in the country on a farm, you need to do some form of gardening. Whether it's just growing sprouts in your kitchen or um, planting on uh, you know pots on the patio or or uh, having a small garden in the backyard, whatever, you need to know how to grow your own food, produce your own produce at some level. Even now, if it's just practicing these skills so that later on, if and when you might need them, you know how to do it. You don't want to be learning how to do it when you are going to require or be more dependent on the yield of your crops in order to have a certain level of comfort or survival. That's not the time to be learning and making mistakes. And trust me, I make mistakes all the time. I've lost whole freaking crops of stuff before in the past. Uh, it, it is hard. Um, it, it's not easy stuff. Some stuff grows really well and some stuff you just struggle with. Um, so it's, it's finding out what works well in your area, what you're good at growing, what you're not. And, uh, you, you know, you, you kind of want to play that game now while, you know, the supermarket is well stocked than later on when it may not be or when prices are low. So definitely learn how to garden. So next, number seven, Seven. Food preparation and storage. Like gardening, food preparation probably more so is one of the things that when you think of a prepper, this is usually one of the things you think of. You think of the basement and the shelves full of all the buckets and cans and dehydrated this, that, and the other thing. Um, and all the, you know, 12 bottles of mouthwash and, <laughs> you know, whatever. And uh, that's what most people think of when they think of of, uh, of a prepper, somebody who has large storage of stuff in, in their house. And, and definitely food preservation and storage is a big part of that. Storage, obviously, you know, knowing how to store beans, uh, rice, corn, wheat berries, uh, you, you know, just lots of different things like that. Um, knowing how to uh, properly store your food, rotate through it, um, get the most out of the shelf life of what you're trying to uh, store. But not only that kind of stuff, but understanding, you know, food preservation techniques like uh, canning, big time, uh, smoking, curing, dehydrating, big time, um, fermenting, pickling, the, all those different types of techniques to preserve food are all important to know. Um, if you don't know how to do those things, you need to start learning. If you don't have a dehydrator, you need to get one. If you don't have a smoker, yeah, you should probably think about getting one. If you've never pickled anything, if you've never jarred or canned anything, you got you got to get started. That's very important, especially when you combine that in with a garden, especially bigger gardens. You're gonna be taking a lot of produce all at once. You're not gonna be able to eat it all, you know, in in, in a week or something like that. And if you, you know if you're growing lots of tomatoes, man, those plants are spitting out tomatoes left and right when they're in season. You literally can't eat that many tomatoes, so you have to start canning them, preparing them, and 
or you know storing them away for later on when you need them. So um, definitely a very important skill to have. Number eight. Number eight. Uh, this is one I kind of jumbled a few things together in order to get it to all fit on a top ten list. So I probably could expand it a little bit more, but um, this one's kind of a kind of a big one. Basic construction and home maintenance. So basic construction. So this is easy. You should learn how to, uh, or at least understand how how structures are put together and understand uh, you know basic construction techniques and know how to use a hammer and a nail and some two by fours and some plywood and stuff like that. Um, a really good place to start if you have no experience with construction whatsoever, a really good place to start is start going to the seminars that a lot of the home improvement centers like uh, Home Depot and Lowe's and stuff like that have. They'll go through on you know weekends a couple hour seminar on uh, rough in framing for houses and you know how to you know remodel your kitchen or bathroom or whatever. Um, uh, home plumbing and home electrical and, and uh, all sorts of different types of seminars usually for free at your local home centers so that's a really good place to start it's going to be you know a seminar usually it's not going to be hands-on experience but it's definitely a good place to start um, from there obviously I've said it before I'll say it again community college is a great place to go for these types of skills if you don't have any other outlet for it at the very minimum just start doing some stuff at home build yourself a workbench uh, build yourself a birdhouse start simple uh, and you know learn how stuff goes together learn how to build strong structures understand how your house is built um, those are all very important home maintenance is another thing knowing how to keep your home in good working order uh, very important do it now it will be too late to do it later on when you absolutely have to okay so if you have issues with your home you got to take care of them now and you should try to do as many of these things yourself be self-sufficient as you can if you got leaks in your roof if you got problems with your foundation if you need to patch that hole in the wall or or, or replace this that or the other thing or have that battery backup uh, sub pump or whatever uh, you need to uh, you need to uh, get on those things right away uh, understand the systems of your house, how it works, understand basic construction, how that works, know how to swing a hammer and a nail and fix some stuff around the house. So there you go, number eight. Number nine, We're coming down the home stretch on number nine, communications. Specifically, kind of radio communications we're probably focusing on here most of. And I'm just going to do a flyby on this one. I'm not really going to get into what you need and how to do ham radio. and all. Okay, we're not going to get into the specifics here. We're just kind of going to do a flyby. But understand the basics of communications. Information is very, very important. Being able to inform yourself with what's going on and being able to inform others of what's happening with you, uh, especially your family and friends and your network of, 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 uh, of uh, friends and, and whatnot. It's important to your community. It's important to, to have that kind of ability to communicate with people and to especially to get information. So you need to have some sort of infrastructure in your home and available and uh, able to operate off-grid of having some sort of communications in your home and understanding how it works and how to use it um, is vital. So you definitely want to start uh, uh, start preparing yourself. Number 10, last one on the list. We're getting back into a, into a general skill. We started off with some general skills, then we went down a bunch of specific skills. Now we're kind of sandwiching this off with number 10 with another general skill. Uh, again, an extremely important skill. And this is another one that separates uh, kind of the men from the boys. This one is really the one that separates survivalists from preppers, practical preppers especially. And that is interpersonal skills. What's better known as people skills. Being able to socialize and communicate with people and delegate things and, uh, you know, leadership and and uh, persuasion and, and uh, being able to... Uh, really you know socialize with people and, and be friendly with people and and connect with people um, being able to barter for things buy sell trade barter these are all important skills to have you as a prepper especially as a practical prepper need to have a network of friends and family and community that you can depend on when disasters happen just like we saw with Sandy uh, Hurricane Sandy communities come together if you've just spent the last three years of your life sitting in your basement with a helmet on cleaning your rifle guess what you're probably not really going to be that important a member of your community and when stuff hits the fan you might not have the connections in your community that you need in order to get the help that you might need to rebuild and and to survive and to have the things that you need if you're a part of a community if you are friends with your neighbors or at the very minimum you know them you're a part of your community you can operate uh, as part of that community and benefit from a community coming together during times of need 
don't underestimate that. If you're a survivalist, you go, that will never happen. Everyone's going to kill each other. Okay, well, you're a survivalist and you probably need to go to a bushcraft channel. But, uh, um, you know, for you practical preppers out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, stuff happens in your community. Communities come together. Communities pull together. They help each other um, and they give help to each other. And you want to have good interpersonal skills to make sure you're a part of the community you live in. Um, so people skills, socializing, leadership, persuasion, these are all good uh, uh, negotiations. These are all good skills to have, very vital as a prepper. Um, so get those networks going, friends, families. You can't be a prepper by yourself. You can't be a prepper if your family's not inv involved with you. Okay, You can't be a prepper if you have no other friends that are preppers too. You can't be a good prepper if you're not out and about meeting your neighbors and being friendly with people and, 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 and communicating and being involved in your, in your community. So uh, the successful preppers are the ones who master these skills, who are organized, spend their money wisely, assess risks and prep accordingly, who have good first aid skills, who know how to cook and provide food for their families, who can garden and provide fresh produce for their family, can preserve and store the things that they need for long term, understand home construction, keep their house in good working order at all times, have the ability to communicate with the outside world when they need to and when, especially when disaster happens, and has the interpersonal skills to be able to communicate with people, negotiate with people, People, have your friends, your family, and your community on your side when the shit hits the fan. These are the most important skills that you need to learn as a prepper. Hope you enjoyed. Take it easy.